with record speeds of up to 122 miles per hour. Much of Britain felt the force of Eunice's temper. Right, so long overdue Tesla transporter update. So it's not here, it's over at Opto Innovation. So me and Danny are gonna jump in the Defender and head over there and see what those guys have been doing. I know everybody's been waiting for an update on the Tesla transporter, but just this, this I don't know. The, the truth is that when me and Mikey dreamed of this idea after far too many run bongos, I don't think we realized how much was gonna be involved. And then when we decided we were gonna do it, instead of just uh, originally it was gonna be like an old T5 share and that would have been easier. We decided to do a brand new T6.1. Instead of just putting a single Tesla motor in the front, we decided to put twin Tesla motors in it, try and break some world records. So it got out of hand, I guess. But once you started it, you've got to finish it and it will be amazing when it's done. We were never going to be able to put the time in and also do all the fabrication work that was needed. We thought, you know, you could just weld a battery in here and there, create a little motor bracket for the front. And well, we just don't have the time or even the knowledge. So that's why the guys at uh, Opto Innovation come in because that's their speciality. So the plan is we're going to head over there and see the next stage. And then from there, it's going off to Edub's conversions because those guys know more about the electrics. But we're going to jump on this now, head off up to Derby and show you what those guys have been up to. Look, there you go. There's their transporter, their branding. Anyway, let's uh, go inside and see the progress these guys have done. There it is. Right, okay, so this is Dan and Pete. I'll take you for a spin around and show you what these guys have done. So we've had a bit of a brief before of not just really walked in and, uh, <laughs> and uh, dropping them straight on this, but uh, it's here. It's nice to see it. You've cleaned it as well, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> it was way dirty in this when it came to you. So <laughs> we're going to spin around. Dan's going to explain what's been done so far. So as I mentioned before on the way over here, we kind of thought we could perhaps take this on ourselves and it dawned on us that that was just not possible. So that's where these guys have come in. So they have created everything that needed all the stress tests and built the battery box, built their front and rear motor mounts. And the work just looks so tidy and so clean but that needed to be done because this thing's gonna have some serious power a few brackets welded here and there and what I think we thought we could do was just unrealistic and that's why it needs to be done to this level and that's why we've, the experts have got involved let's show you what's been done so the first thing you'll notice when you hopefully the camera will pick it up in the front here this is an actual Tesla motor isn't it? this isn't the empty shell that we sent to you an actual Tesla motor. yeah so this one's ready to go so this is um, the subframe that we've designed which bolts into the existing location points that were there from the original engine so we've picked up on all the originally stressed portions of the engine and it drops in, fits nice. Yeah, so you'll see here, there's loads of room still. Loads of people, I guess we've got a load of haters already, haven't we? Saying, why are you doing it? And this is gonna be so heavy and what's the point? This is to show you what is possible. It's not to show you what anybody else is gonna do. Nobody really is gonna to wanna to do a twin motor. This thing's here to learn from it, do it to a T6.1 and then reverse engineer it and work out how could we could use this kind of basis to make something that's affordable, achievable and, and more practical to use in your everyday camper van. Nobody else is going to, going to want a full rolled in, full, uh, welded in roll cage, nobody else is going to want twin motors. The ideal is what we learn from this, we can take this information and create a smaller Model 3 front engine they can give you a decent range. The range on this would be terrible, but we're trying to run it at full chat to try and break some world records yeah. with it. But everything that's been learned from here would allow us in the future the ability to put a smaller Tesla motor, front wheel drive, sit it in here. There's obviously a cooling system going to go in here as well, but it just opens up the options with this space if you wanted to add like a frunk or extra storage or anything possibly in the future. Battery wise for this, we went with a Chevrolet Bolt battery pack. Most, it's in five sections, is it? Five sections, three, three large, two small, yeah. Okay. So four underneath and one inside with all the rest of the control. Okay, so one of the battery boxes, this one? This one, yeah. So that's just got one of the small units inside, but then it's got all the rest of the connection points for all the HV and all the controls, contacts of safety, all in there. Yeah, all hidden in there. Really nice and neatly done with the, the connector sections, all visible there, really well finished. So you can see here from the drawings, Danny, I don't know if you can bring the camera down here. That's what Pete was just working on, how it's all been laid out and how they've worked out all the stress tests and where it's going to sit. So I think we originally went with the Chevrolet Bolt battery pack because we thought we could fit it all underneath. It looked like it could very close to fit underneath, but not quite. So a good portion of it is underneath, which we'll show you in a minute. And then 
we made it even harder for them by sticking a roll cage in there. So I don't know, I can't remember if this is featured in the video yet, but this went off to JP Cages, who is the man when it comes to putting roll cages in vehicles, to have this full welded in roll cage just to give it the rigidity we needed to when we're throwing it around the Nürburgring. Again, nobody's ever gonna want this done in this vehicle. Yes, it's added loads of weight, but we haven't built this for the sake of turning it into a camper when we finished, we built it to prove that it can be done and to break some records and because it'd be fun and because we were drunk at the time. But um, yeah, so the, uh, that battery box is gonna sit there there yep. in the center of the roll cage nice big space for it to sit in there not we just got to work out where it's all going to go with the electrics and stuff that come out to figure out exactly where it's going to sit so the other thing to notice inside here so obviously in, in some ways the cage i don't know it was a bit of a hindrance when we first gave it <laughs> gave it to you but you've been able to utilize this cage for extra support so yeah. i'll let you explain down what you've done yeah so we've just put some extra supports for the main battery box hanging brackets which tie into this part of the frame and then at the back where the rear subframe is that holds the rear motor, that's all tied into the cage there as well. So we've got another structural point for it to attach to. So basically the battery and the motor and everything is attached to the roll cage instead of just the tin that's on the bottom of a, yes. a van floor. <laughs> okay, so just moving around the back here, obviously there's this giant, beautiful looking roll cage, but there's loads of other steel that these guys have added. So Dan, if you just want to explain what else is going around the back here. Yeah, so there's two things. This is another one of the rear mounts, it's just a sandwich plate. And then we've also picked up on the two tow bar structure points to tie in the rest of the rear, rear subframe mount. And that motor's not going anywhere. No. <laughs> So in the front here, it still looks an absolute mess. I don't know quite what we're going to do about here, but we'll get there eventually. Dan's just pointed out that the roll cage sits really far forward, so we're going to work out how the seats are going to go, but we'll, we'll come to that. Cobra have obviously supplied us with the proper bucket seats, which are going to sit here, but this thing should be a weapon. So the next stage is the electrics. You're pretty much done with it, I think, other than a few little bits. Yeah, just fitting that front box in. Side. Yeah, once you know where the positioning needs to be. Yeah. So next phase is it goes off to kit at E-dubs and they're going to work out the electrics and get it all talking. And uh, from there, after that, back to us, paint, wheels, make it look sexy, some branding, and away you go. So something that's come up quite often when either we've posted pictures or these guys have posted pictures. Actually, what's your Instagram? Because you need to get people following your Instagram. Auto Innovation. Auto Innovation. <laughs> Possible name change coming. But Auto Innovation, follow them on Instagram and you'll see more of the build process pictures of this but it's come up quite a few times about weight because of the amount of steel that's gone in to build this when we bought this we purposely bought a t28 to set ourselves the challenge of making sure we could keep it under 2.8 ton as i said before nobody's going to want this work doing to their van because it's just pointless but what the goal will be to make a lighter setup that is achievable as it stands now we weighed this when it came out of the factory and was it 17.95 kilos uh, yeah and we stripped it, so engine out, cooling system out, fuel system out, everything that was not needed out, gearbox was out, and it was 1350. We've had a 250 kilos of steel, we've had a 330 kilos of batteries, and 360 kilos of motors. Yeah, so take into consideration the steel roll cage and a few of the bits we, it's going to be under two and a half tons we think but we'll know for sure we'll get this back on the weighing scales obviously this just needs to be under 2.8 ton because we're not going to put a camper conversion or anything daft in the back it's not going to have a purpose it's going to be completely useless when we're done with it other than loads of fun but yeah it's definitely achievable but again you wouldn't need to do all of this and add all this weight if you were doing a front end small model 3 conversion with a different battery setup so there's the next update on the tesla transporter build hopefully that keeps some of you quiet for a while gets us off our back and stops harassing us and the opto guys but promise you another update will come a lot quicker than it took us to get this one out. This is the hardest part of the build, I think, in a lot of ways. Kit from uh, E-Dub Conversions might have a different opinion on that. I think he might think his, but it's the hardest. But anyway, next stage, it's off to him. So we'll update you on that. And then after that, let's, we'll start making it look pretty. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, YouTube algorithms like it. Please share it with other people that you think might be interested in Crazy Transport that hopefully will break some world records, but also potentially having their own transport converted to electric in the future. Maybe, we'll see. Please do subscribe to the channel, ring the little bell, that will tell you uh, when we bring out new videos so you get updates on this as and when it comes out. And as always, thanks for watching.